Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny, and welcome back to another news video. So we are here to talk about the upcoming books in the Fazbear Frights book series. We're hopping straight into it because we have some interesting things to discuss. We have a brand new title for the seventh book. It was changed for some reason. We'll talk about that. And then we also have the official description of the eighth book. Real quick though, before we hop into those two books, I would like to say, in case you did not know, Bunny Call, aka the fifth book in the Fazbear Fright series, is officially out. It was available, I want to say a couple days ago. I can't remember the exact date, but I'm pretty sure it was sometime early September, so it's not all that new, but it's still pretty new information. So yeah, the fifth book is out, I don't have it right now, I still need to catch up on the previous books. So now, let's hop into the actual news, starting off with Fazbear Frights book number seven. So originally, the seventh book in the Fazbear Frights series was called The Breaking Wheel, which is a contraption that Phineas has in previous books, and it was alluded to in those previous books. However, there has been a slight name change to the book. The book is now called Fazbear Frights number 7, The Cliffs. So normally, with how the books go, the first story in the book is always the name of the whole book, right? Into the Pit's first story was the Into the Pit story, Fetch's first story was the Fetch story, Step Closer's first story is the Step Closer story, and again, I have not read Bunny Call, I don't have it, so this may or may not be true, but I'm guessing it is true. The first story in Bunny Call is most likely Bunny Call. Now, if you were paying attention, which hopefully you are, because you did click on this video after all, which by the way, why not subscribe if you're not subscribed already, man, just go down there, it takes like two seconds. Anyways, you may have noticed that I skipped over 1.35 a.m. and I did that for a very specific reason. Now, I did not know about this, I only just found out about it today, and I totally did put it in episode 3 of 150 Random FNAF Facts, which I guess I totally just announced before the second episode's even out, so there's that. But for people that got an early copy of Into the Pit, it was revealed that the third book, aka 1.35 AM, was originally going to be called Room for One More, which still is a story in that book, but it is not the first one. So my guess is that they just switched around the order of the stories for some reason. It could be because the breaking wheel is an actual torture device in real life, so maybe they just didn't want to have the name of the book be an actual torture device because, you know, now, some kids are reading these books, but based off of this new information, we now know two out of the three story names in the book. The first one is now The Cliffs, and the second or third one is The Breaking Wheel. And just in case you forgot, I'll go over the description of the book right now. Some things must be learned the hard way. Reed sees an opportunity to teach the school bully not to mess with him, but ends up mangling the lesson. Robert, an exhausted single father, gets a crash course in parenting when he buys a fancy new teddy bear to watch and entertain his young son. Chris, eager to join the science club at school, agrees to undergo a grisly experiment to be accepted. But in the malevolent universe of Five Nights at Freddy's, there's always an education in pain. So I'm pretty sure we've talked about the description before in a previous video, but I'll go over my thoughts on it quickly. The word choice of Mangle in the first story is definitely something that we should keep an eye on. The second story about Robert, you know, a single father buying a teddy bear to entertain his young son, is definitely a parallel or a connection or at least a reference to William Afton. You guys gotta keep in mind that these technically are separate universes from the games. I think Scott has made that very clear. And then Chris and the Science Club. Now we've heard about experiments before in the past in the original book trilogy about how William Afton experimented with Remnant and he like melded the endoskeletons together. That might be a bit of a stretch because really any science experiment could be the case. But yeah. Uh, we've been on this for a while, so now let's move on to the 8th book. So the 8th book, strangely enough, does not actually have a title, but it does now have a description. And this is what it says. A string of bad luck you can't seem to shake. For Angel, Hudson, and Sergio, it's an all too familiar feeling. Repulsed by her spoiled stepsister's lavish birthday party, Angel exacts a hasty and ill-fated revenge. Hudson's young life is littered with tragedy and broken dreams, but a well-paying security job might be all he needs to turn things around. Sergio acquires a unique novelty toy that instantly brings good luck. 
But is the toy really leading him to happiness or to a more monstrous end? In this 8th volume, FNAF creator Scott Cawthon spins three sinister novella-length stories from different corners of his series' canon, featuring cover art from fan-favorite artist Lady Fizzy. Readers beware, this collection of terrifying tales is enough to unsettle even the most hardened FNAF fans. Okay, so let's talk about this description, because it seems very interesting, but at the same time, kind of familiar. So, the one about the birthday party. Now, we all know about birthday parties in the FNAF world. There was one in FNAF 4, and there was one in FNAF 2, as well as probably a lot more. The happiest day, too. Could be about happiest day. So I feel like it's probably going to mention some sort of birthday at Freddy's, whether it's Freddy's or Fred Bear's. And it also seems like the story's a bit familiar to Lonely Freddy. Hudson's story about his life being filled with tragedies and broken dreams honestly is nothing new to a character in FNAF. But based off that line, I feel like it's probably going to have something to do with the Afton family. Of course not directly, because these books are never about direct connections, more references, and, and you know, small nods to the rest of the franchise, so I guess we're gonna have to take a close look at that story as well. And Sergio's story is definitely, again, interesting because it's about him finding a toy, which, again, is nothing new to the franchise. Lonely Freddy, I would say, is another close, you know, parallel with stories. How Alec finds a plush Freddy and now Sergio finds a toy that grants him good luck. Seems like a mix of Lonely Freddy and Fetch, how Fetch went out and brought back anything that, I forget, <laughs> I forget the guy's name, um, whatever he requested. Greg, that's his name, Greg. Whatever Greg wants, Fetch goes out and fetches for him. And quickly going back to Hudson's story, a lot of people are also saying it sounds familiar to Room for One More, where that was literally about a person that worked at Circus Babies Entertainment and Rentals, and, and well, I don't want to spoil it for you, but yeah, so it seems like this is another story about a security guard or someone that just walks at Freddy's, but it seems like this is going to be more linked with what we already know about the FNAF games. You know, your security guard walking the night shift at Freddy's, whether this is Freddy's or some other location, I don't know. Um, but again, it seems like that one's going to be very familiar to us FNAF fans. As of right now, that is all the news for these books. Again, no covers just yet, no titles besides the name change for The Breaking Wheel. Again, I want to know why they did that. A lot of people are saying that it's because of the torture device. But at the same time, it's like, if you've read these stories, you know that they are most definitely not for kids. That's going to be interesting to find out why they did that, if we find out why they did that. But for right now, that is it. I do have another video coming out, hopefully sometime soon, about the Twisted Ones graphic novel. And in that video, I also need to talk about the new FNAF coloring book that got announced a while back. Yeah, another book video coming out hopefully very soon, so stay on the lookout for that. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.